Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, blessings, and guidance of Almighty Allah be upon you. It's my pleasure to welcome you to tonight's program of Perspectives. We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending blessings upon his noble messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My beloved brothers and sisters, we have been discussing lots of the fascinating stories from Al-Quran. Our only motive for this is that all of us, we can benefit practically and making ourselves better Muslims when we listen to these stories and that we can benefit fully and gain the rewards of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our, our efforts as our motive is only to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as we said, make our lives better, make ourselves better servants to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the past, we did the story of the, the, the cow teaching us the lessons of not procrastinating and asking too many questions when it comes to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as we will learn from our discussion today for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and we do not know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the wisdom in every situation and we do not know tonight insha'Allah Sheikh Abdul Alim Rahim is with me president of the Guyana Islamic Trust Sheikh welcome to Perspectives yes, once Allah, again Allah, Allah. and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you Sheikh Amen. 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 So tonight, inshallah, we will be discussing the story of Musa and Al-Khadir. So what we will do, Sheikh will introduce us to this story and go through it with us, inshallah, and then we will go straight into the lessons that we can benefit from practically. Sheikh, welcome. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma allamtana innaka anta al alim al hakim Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa fa'na bima allamtana wa zidna ilman wa 'amalan mutaqabbalan ya rabbal alamin amin Beloved brothers and sisters assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to our muslim viewers may the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala God almighty be with all of you Of course the story of prophet Musa alayhi salam Moses as is translated, mm -hmm. uh, is repeated in quite a number of places in the Quran, more than any other story, actually of any other prophet. Uh, and there are various episodes of his uh, story that are mentioned in different places of the Quran. And uh, the reason for that is that there are many, many similarities between the the nation or the followers and the, and the mission of Musa alayhi salam and that of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his ummah, his nation and his followers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Holy Quran that the stories are there for us to take lessons from. So, لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبْرَةٌ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Allah says that verily in their stories there are lessons for people of understanding so whenever he mentions a story in the quran it is not just for entertainment entertainment but it is for us to reflect on and take lessons from for our lives and so the reason why the the story of prophet musa salam, is mentioned in so many places in the quran is because of the great lessons that there are to be learned from his story for the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because of the similarities mm -hmm. uh, between the Ummah of Musa Alaihi Wasallam and the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and of course because of the lessons. Mm -hmm. The experiences of Musa Alaihi Wasallam, we learn from them. Uh, so we spoke in the past as you, as you rightly mentioned about the story of the cow which was mm -hmm. one episode from the, the, the story of Musa alayhi salam. Yeah. Within his general mission, this was one episode that took place regarding the cow. Mm. We have other ones that inshallah we'll touch on in the future, such as 
when he uh, migrated to Madian. Mm. Uh, and so that, that's a different story later on. One of the very famous stories that took place with Prophet Musa was the one uh, which details his interaction with uh, this pious man Al-Khadir who was, according to one opinion, also a prophet. Uh, the, the reason for this story, a uh, circumstance surrounding this story, is that once Prophet Musa السلام, gave a sermon to his people, and after that sermon, a man came to him and asked him, Man a'lamu ahlil ard? O Musa, who is the most learned, who is the most knowledgeable person on the face of the earth? And Musa السلام, instinctively replied, Ana, I am. Of course, his answer was not based on arrogance or pride, mm -hmm. but he took it for granted that I am the prophet, then I am the most knowledgeable because Allah is revealing to me. Mm -hmm. So who else will be there who is more knowledgeable than me? He just took that for granted. Yes. And that, that was innocent on his part. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala corrected him immediately and said, there is a servant of mine to whom I have taught knowledge that you do not have. So Allah corrected him immediately. Uh, and this again, right away is a lesson for all of us that no matter how much we know, no matter how much we learn, we should never assert or claim for ourselves that we are the most knowledgeable even in a particular field, yeah. you know, if, if, if we specialize in a particular field, uh, because it's very difficult for anybody nowadays to say, well, I'm the most knowledgeable overall. Who, who, who can make that claim? But even in a particular field where we may specialize, and even if we think or we know that, you know what, I have studied here in this area the most, out of humility, we should not bring ourselves to say, well, I am the most knowledgeable, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so this is something that we learn from the story. As I said, the response of Musa السلام, was not based on arrogance and pride. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the proof of that is that immediately after Allah corrected him and told him that I have a servant of mine to whom I have taught knowledge that you do not have, mm -hmm. he demonstrated the humility and the willingness of the student. And he asked Allah to give him permission to go and accompany that person to learn from him. So that shows what? It shows humility. Mm -hmm. It shows willingness to learn. Yeah. Not the attitude of someone who claims, well, I know everything or I know the most. Because that attitude is one that is based on pride and arrogance. And that person is not really willing to learn more. Mm -hmm. He's not really willing to humble himself to want to learn. Uh, so it becomes more of a competition mm -hmm. with that person who has that type of attitude to prove, well, I know more than everybody else mm -hmm. and to downplay what other people know. So the fact that Musa Al -Salam exhibited this uh, willingness and this humility to say, oh Allah, I want to go and meet that person. I want to go and learn from that person. It shows what? That keenness, that humility mm -hmm. of the student to always, that hunger to always learn more, all right? And, you know, just that genuine interest in learning what is good. Because as we will see, when he uh, met with Al-Khadr, uh, he asked him to teach him of the good that Allah had taught to him. Mm -hmm. So his interest is, was in what? Learning are benefiting where goodness is concerned. Yeah. And, and there's Sheikh, a whole motive behind Sheikh, seeking knowledge. The thing is that, um, as we learned, he had to actually travel a distance and make the effort to reach this person. Right. That's another point that, inshallah, we can, we can touch on a bit. The, yeah. the effort that is necessary, mm -hmm. um, you know, and traditionally that has been the, the way of the scholars yes. across the centuries, yeah. uh, traveling for the sake of knowledge.
-hmm. And the more one makes effort in the path of seeking knowledge, the, the more one appreciates what he or she learns, mm -hmm. and it also there's greater merit in that whole journey of seeking knowledge in, in the effort that is made. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, وَمَنْ سَلَكَ طَرِيقًا يَلْتَمِسُ فِيهِ عِلْمًا سَهَّلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ بِهِ طَرِيقًا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ mm -hmm. Whoever follows a path, seeking knowledge, Allah will make through that path that he follows, he will make the way to Jannah easy for him. Mm -hmm. So the, the understanding of the hadith is that the more effort one puts into seeking knowledge, the easier the path to Jannah becomes, insha'Allah. Yeah. And so, uh, yes, Musa alayhi salam, when Allah corrected him and said, I have a servant of mine to whom I have taught knowledge that you do not know. Mm -hmm. He then sought permission from Allah. Oh Allah, can I go and seek this person and accompany him to learn from him? Allah gave him permission. Yeah. And so he set out to go on this journey. And this is where the, the, the story starts in the Quran, in Surah Al-Kahf. Uh, by the way, the, the story is mentioned in Surah Al-Kahf, Surah number 18 of the Quran from verse 60 up to verse 82 yeah so from verses 60 to 82 this is where this story is is mentioned so it's quite a, a, a lengthy story yeah um various uh incidents that took place very yeah. interesting inshallah one of the very or the we can say one of the most interesting uh and de and detailed stories yeah. that are mentioned in the quran yeah. Uh, and so there are beautiful lessons to be learned from it, insha'Allah. Mm -hmm. So the ayah that you mentioned, Sheikh, is uh, number 60, and mentioned when Musa said to his servant, I will not cease traveling until I reach the junction of two seas or continue for a long period. Right. So Musa salam, asked Allah, mm -hmm. how will I meet this person? Where will I meet him? How will I know him? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed him. And by the way, Musa alayhi salam, like all of the prophets, is receiving revelation from Allah. And on top of that, Musa alayhi salam was kalimullah. He was spoken to directly by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he spoke directly to Allah and Allah spoke directly to him. Uh, Allah Musa taklima. And Allah spoke directly to Musa alayhi salam. As Allah tells us in the Holy Quran. So Allah spoke informed Musa alayhi salam and instructed him take a fish a dead fish mm. in a container take that fish with you and travel to the junction of the two seas which two seas Allah knows best because there are various opinions in that region around that area where Musa alayhi salam was which uh, is around the area of Jerusalem and, 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 and Palestine as a whole, uh, there are a number of seas that meet one another. Right. So there are differences of opinion which two seas. Allah knows best. The point is he had to reach an area that was a junction of two seas and apparently it was a, an extensive area. So it's not just a, you know, a very small point that he knows once he reaches this exact point, this is where the person will be. All right. As we will see in the story, he reached an area and I guess that whole area would have been considered junction of the two seas, but then they traveled for quite a while along that area uh, before they, um, they reached with Al-Khadr alayhi salam. So Allah informed him, you go to the junction of the two seas mm -hmm. and you take this fish with you. And where you lose the fish, that is where you will find him. So how will he lose the fish? Basically, the fish will come to life and it will, uh, you know, move off on its own. Mm -hmm. And where he loses the fish, that is where he will meet Al-Khadr. So the verse continues. Yes. <clears throat> but when they reached the junction between them, that is the seas, right? They forgot their fish. And it took its course into the sea, slipping away. Right. So, uh, by the way, uh, Musa alayhi salam had in his company... Mm -hmm. uh, his servant boy who was Yusha ibn Noon as the scholars say mm -hmm. and he would later be also become a prophet mm -hmm. Yusha ibn Noon so uh, he was in very righteous company both of them obviously um, 
And they traveled until they reached this area, as Musa Ali Salam said, I will not cease traveling until I reach to this area, mm-hmm. uh, or I will continue traveling for a long time until I reach this person. So when they reach the area of the junction of the two seas, as I said, it's uh, possibly an extensive area, so they couldn't pinpoint exactly which area, but they rested at a particular area where uh, there was a rock. They rested uh, you know, uh, in the vicinity of a rock. Mm-hmm. And Musa salam slept. Yusha ibn Nun, his servant, was awake and he observed when the fish came to life. This is a miracle Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused the fish mm-hmm. to come to life. Uh, he observed when the fish came to life and it started wriggling and moving and eventually jumped out of his container mm-hmm. and it wriggled until it reached the water. Because they're at the junction of the seas, they're right next to the sea, it, it reached to the water and it started swimming. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again caused miraculously that the, the, the water should then uh, become as if frozen in its place so that the track of the fish as it was swimming remained. Oh, okay. All right? So you could actually see where the fish had swum. Mm-hmm. The water remained stagnated in that form mm-hmm. in which the fish, uh, as the fish passed. So that they would know, well, here is where they lost they the lost fish. The fish yes. uh, nevertheless, he saw this amazing thing. Uh, Allah says, فَاتَّقَذَ سَبِيلَهُ فِي الْبَحْرِ سَرَبًا It took its course into the sea in the form of a, like a tunnel, basically. You, a, a trail in the, in the water, you could actually see it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then he forgot. Uh, the next verse is? Yes. Moses said, that is what we were seeking. But, sorry, can you uh, read the, the words before? before. Then, yeah. Okay, he said, Did you see when we retired to the rock? Indeed, I forgot there the fish. And none made me forget it except Satan, and that I should mention it. And it took its course into the sea amazingly. Right. So, when Musa a.s. awoke, Yeah. Uh, his servant forgot to inform him about this mm-hmm. uh, and they continued traveling. Mm-hmm. They traveled for uh, quite a distance mm-hmm. according to um, uh, some narrations the rest of the day and the night as well they traveled. Mm-hmm. And then Musa alayhi salam, he became very exhausted and he said to his servant, uh, let's have our food. Uh, because we have become very exhausted from this traveling. Mm-hmm. At the point where he mentioned food, then his servant remembered about the fish. And he said to him, Do you remember when we went back, when we were resting by that rock? Mm-hmm. Uh, I forgot everything to tell you about this fish, what happened with this fish. It came to life mm-hmm. and it went into the sea. And it swam in an amazing way because the water remained with and this is the trail uh, mm-hmm. that, that it passed through. It remained like that so you could actually see it afterwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when he informed Musa salam about this, Musa salam said, ma kunna nabighi. That is what we were seeking. Mm-hmm. That's what we were looking for. فَرْتَدَّ عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمَا قَصَصَا So they retreated. And they went all the way back to that rock where they had lost the fish. Mm-hmm. When they reached back there, then they found a servant of ours who, to whom we had given mercy from us and we taught him knowledge from ourselves. So, Two things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned here about this servant mm-hmm. who was Al Khadr alayhi salam. His name is not mentioned in the Quran, but it's mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet. Salam. And uh, just a point to note that uh, uh, it is very widespread and famous among people um, that his name is Al Khidr. Mm-hmm. That's a, a, you know, it's an alternative pronunciation, but the, uh, the pronunciation according to the hadith of the Prophet salam, is Al Khadr. Mm-hmm. So, if you hear Khidr and so on, we know it's the same person we're speaking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
so they found this person uh, resting in that area and Musa alayhi salam approached him gave him salam and started conversing with him and uh, asked him if he can follow him if he can accompany him hal attabi'uka ala an tu'allimani mimma 'allimta rushda can i may i follow you accompany you on the condition that you teach me of what you have been taught of goodness mm-hmm. of guidance by the way coming back to the verse before i mentioned allah says that he gave him rahma mercy mm-hmm. and he gave him knowledge so what is the mercy uh, many of the scholars say that mercy here means prophethood mm-hmm. as i said there is a difference of opinion among the scholars as to whether he was a prophet or just a pious man mm-hmm. uh, to whom allah had given uh, you know certain knowledge knowledge of certain things yeah uh, according to that opinion that he is a prophet, they say that the rahmah, the mercy that is mentioned here, is prophethood. According to the other opinion, they say that it was uh, basically authority in the land. That Allah had given him authority in, in whichever area he was ruling or, li- or living. Uh, nevertheless, the opinion that he was a prophet seems to be the stronger one because of the very fact that Allah was informing him about things and revealing and inspiring things to him uh, which even Musa salam, did not know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, th- this is a very strong argument um, in support of the opinion that he was actually a prophet. Yeah, Sheikh, and this is probably because also that this boy, well, when we come to that part of the story, the boy hadn't grown up as yet, but he was able to tell what the boy will become. Well, of course, of every one of those episodes shows that Allah yeah. informed him about what will happen in the future, yeah. about these events. Yeah. And so uh, that type mm-hmm. of instruction and inspiration mm-hmm. obviously um, comes uh, as, a, and that's inspiration is a form of revelation. Yeah. And revelation generally uh, comes to the prophets. Mm-hmm. So uh, he asked uh, Al Khadr alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam asked Al Khadr, "Can I follow you on condition that you teach me of what you have been taught of goodness?" Mm-hmm. Now, uh, again, here we can reflect immediately that, first of all, Musa alayhi salam exhibited great humility. Yeah. From the time he learned that there is someone who has knowledge of some things that. He doesn't know. He wanted to go and seek more knowledge. It shows what a passion to learn more. But with the correct intention. This is this is very important. Extremely important. We all are obligated to seek knowledge. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Talabul ilmi faridatun ala kulli Muslim. Seeking knowledge is an obligation on every Muslim. What knowledge? How much knowledge? First of all, there is what is farud'ayn, what is compulsory on every individual to learn. This is the greatest priority. So, what we must know, every one of us, that is compulsory on each of us to seek knowledge of. And we are not excused if we have the ability to seek that knowledge, we have the avenue through which, through which to seek that knowledge, we are not excused uh, for remaining ignorant in this area. We are not excused to be complacent for complacency if we uh, do not and we fail to actually make the effort to seek that knowledge, we are not excused for it. Right? Because uh, we know that one of the excuses that people may have is when they don't know something. They're not taken to task for what they don't know. Mm -hmm. But you're not taken to task for what you don't know of things that is not obligatory on you, to things that are not obligatory on you to learn. Mm -hmm. But what is obligatory on you to learn, that's followed already. And therefore, if you don't don't actually learn that, then it means you are in a state that is blameworthy. Mm -hmm. 
So for example, we need to learn how to pray. And before that, we need to learn how to purify ourselves, to make wudu and so on, to purify ourselves. We also need to learn the basics of what we must believe as Muslims that makes us believers. Because if we don't know what we have to believe, then how do we distinguish ourselves from everybody else? We have to have a clear set of beliefs because this is, first of all, the most important thing that distinguishes the believer from an unbeliever. The fact that our, our belief is based on what God Almighty has revealed in his Quran and as taught to us by his Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the main pillars of our belief, we have to understand it. Mm -hmm. We have to understand that uh, Allah is one and he has no partners and that he alone deserves to be worshipped. And basically what constitutes associating partners with him to avoid those things. Mm -hmm. Because we have to avoid anything that is considered shirk or associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. right? So we need to know about Allah and what we have to believe about Allah. And likewise, mm -hmm. we believe in the other pillars of Iman. As we know, there are six pillars of Iman. We believe in all of those and we have to have at least the basic understanding of them. This is fard ayn on everybody. Yeah. That we need to know those things. As I said, our tahara, our cleanliness, yeah. uh, purification in order to perform salah. Because when we pray our salah, we have to be in a state of purity. And so it is not excusable for someone to say, well, I don't know how to make wudu, so I can't make wudu. I never learned how to pray, so I'm excused. No, we are not excused to that. Because it is compulsory on every one of us to pray. And therefore, we are not allowed to approach our prayer in a state of ignorance, not knowing what we are supposed to do and continue in that way. Mm -hmm. Let's say somebody who is a new Muslim. Somebody who is a new Muslim who has not had the time yet or the opportunity or the avenue in order to learn the details of the salah. They are excused for a period of time, but only for a period of time. Mm -hmm. And then they have to try within a reasonable period of time to learn how to pray. Mm -hmm. Find the people who will teach them how to pray or you have so many different avenues and platforms nowadays to learn to pray. There are uh, video demonstrations online, so many different formats. Mm -hmm. right? So if that person chooses to remain in a state of ignorance, then we are not excused for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Sheikh, right. um, seeking knowledge is one. A seeking beneficial knowledge is also, uh, should be also important. You know, some people, they, they like to seek knowledge or they get themselves engrossed in things like, well, race was a certain prophet, or as you mentioned in the story, uh, how, how much time they, they, the youths remained in the cave, and not, you know, things that cannot make us better servants from Allah So, beneficial yeah, and, knowledge. And again, definitely, definitely, yeah. beneficial knowledge. Uh, by the way, I want to also mention here that knowledge, the, the scope of knowledge is extremely uh, extensive and wide. Yeah. So we don't limit it to say, well, okay, the only type of knowledge that we can seek is religious knowledge, so to speak. Yeah. Beneficial knowledge, whether it's knowledge to deal with our worldly life or knowledge to deal with our hereafter, they're all included on the beneficial knowledge. We don't just say, well, okay, worldly uh, secular knowledge mm -hmm. or spiritual knowledge, so to speak, or of the hereafter, or religious knowledge only. No, all. But obviously there are priorities in each area. So where it concerns uh, our religious knowledge, put it that way, mm -hmm. we have to learn about our obligations. Like I mentioned, our purification, our salah, our fast, uh, our, our prayer, our daily prayer, mm -hmm. how, what we believe, when it comes to our other obligations like fasting in the month of Ramadan and what, um, well, what constitutes fasting, what nullifies fasting, these kind of things, right? And likewise with our zakah, where our wealth is concerned, giving our zakah, all right? Our business, the business that we do, and each one of us has a different profession or, or, or a different type of, of business and work mm -hmm. and trade, then the unique laws surrounding our 
our work or our business, we need to know about it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and so a person who is, for example, uh, a, a butcher, mm -hmm. he needs to learn about uh, things to do with sacrifice and uh, halal meat and and and, and uh, uh, ruling surrounding that. Yeah. All right. Um, he doesn't have to learn another type of business if he's not involved in that. Mm -hmm. But he needs to know about the business in which he is involved and the rules surrounding that. Mm -hmm. That is for the ayn upon him so that he is conducting his or uh, his business and his income is is taken from a, a sound and a halal source. So whichever area we're dealing with that, the rules surrounding that type of work that we do and our profession and so on, that is what becomes compulsory upon us. Uh, we have, you know, uh, different specializations that, and, and we, we equip ourselves, we, we, you know, we become um, qualified in different fields in, in, in dunya, whether it's um, economics or business, accountant, uh, accountancy, and, you know, something to do with engineering or science or medicine or, or law. Whatever area it is we choose to follow for our profession, uh, knowledge in any of these areas is beneficial. Mm -hmm. So we don't just categorize beneficial knowledge as being religious knowledge. Knowledge in all areas. But like I said, there are aspects of religious knowledge that none of us can ignore where it concerns our obligations. We all have to seek knowledge in these areas, at least where the Quran is concerned. We need to learn a few surahs. Mm -hmm. We must know to recite Surah Al-Fatiha and a few other short surahs. At least, at the very least, we need to know to recite these properly. And, you know, unfortunately, it is sad to see that many, many people, I don't want to say majority, mm -hmm. but many, many people, who, you know, they're supposed to be religious and practicing their deen, but if they recite Surah Al-Fatiha, they can't recite it properly. Mm -hmm. They might have, you know, uh, all sorts of qualifications and PhD where it concerns different, you know, fields of specialization uh, concerning, you know, the, the secular sciences. When it comes to their religious knowledge, even the most basic knowledge they lack. Mm -hmm. That is sadly... It is very, very uh, unbalanced. Yeah. There's a great imbalance there and it is not acceptable. Yeah. And Sheikh, you know, please allow me to add this. That there's a lot of people, they, they have matters that, as you said, importance, matters of importance to them. That, and it, it covers their day-to-day -day service to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, prayers and recitation of Quran, eating halal and, and all of these things, right? That they don't go after in seeking knowledge. Instead, they go after differences of opinion or comparative religion, and they forget the very basic things that we need to actually carry us to paradise. Right. So that, that's the other point that's very important that you mentioned. Um, areas of knowledge that... First of all, areas of knowledge which will not be of benefit to us. Yeah. Some people find intrigue mm -hmm. in, uh, you know, in the things that you know we we don't know, mm -hmm. All right? Uh, so they they try to pursue those things, but the obvious knowledge that is there and it is available for everyone, they will neglect all of that and go and search about something that is really not important at all. Yeah. Right? It's not important. And so from the story of the cow, we learned before, too many questions about insignificant things and insignificant details, they don't matter. Mm -hmm. and, you know, like the people, they were commanded to slaughter a cow. What's the color of the cow? What's the age of the cow? What is this? What is that? We want all of the details of this cow before we slaughter it. Mm -hmm. And so as they started making things harder, Allah made things harder on them until, you know, as we know from the story, yeah. They ended up finding it extremely difficult to find the cow with the specific description that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eventually yeah. gave to them. And so, you know, delving into things really that are, yes, a novelty. People have curiosity about things that are a novelty, all right? Mm -hmm. But the things that are obvious and are important, they are the first priority. Yeah. When we have 
past that stage of knowing the things that we need to know, then delve into other areas. Yeah. You know, if, if there is a need for it, or if you, you, your, your curiosity is not quelled at that point in time, by all means, try to delve into other things. In a, a, where it's possible, of course, where it's possible mm -hmm. to know. Things of the unseen, we can't know. Yeah. But there are things that if you can do more research and so on, you can possibly get to more details about them. But don't ignore the things that are most important. That's like, that's like going to build a building and you want to start with the roof. How do you start a building with the roof and you don't build the foundation? What will happen? Yeah. You just put up some, some, some pillars and you want to build a roof and you've not put a foundation there. What's going to happen? The whole building will collapse. Yeah. So we have to start with the basics and get our basics right and learn the things that are most important to us, that are fun to us. And, and so I say this as an encouragement to myself and to all of us. We need to show more keenness to learn the things that are most important to us. Mm -hmm. By the way, we put a lot more emphasis on our dunya and learning the things about for our well-being and our livelihoods in the dunya than we do for our hereafter. And therefore, it is important for us to keep re-emphasizing the, 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 the seeking of the religious aspect of knowledge. Mm -hmm. People tend to get bored with yeah. this and, 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 you know, they feel, well, okay, we're just harping over one thing over and over again, religious knowledge, religious knowledge. But this is, first of all, the aspect of knowledge that will enable us to live our lives in a way that is pleasing to God Almighty, to at least uh, fulfill our obligations and our acts of worship to Him in a proper way. So if we don't put emphasis on this, how is it we're going to seek the pleasure of our, our, of our Lord? Mm -hmm. We want to seek the pleasure of our Lord. We have to learn how to submit to Him correctly. Therefore, we need to know how to pray our salah properly. Don't just be satisfied with going through the motions just the way you see people doing it and you have not actually taken the time to sit and to learn what is it that I need to say in each part of my salah and to say it properly. Mm -hmm. You've never taken the time to learn how to sit and read a few surahs of the Quran properly. Yeah. Here, or the shaitan uh, come to an understanding that, look, I can't stop this person from actually seeking knowledge, but I'm going to divert him from what he really supposed it's to know. It's all parts of the trap, trap yeah. of the shaitan. He, yeah. he will work in, in stages with a person. Yeah. He will not attack everybody in the same way and tempt them with the same things. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, he will start with, with something that seems very vague and bit by bit he will intensify yeah. His attack based on, on the progress that he makes yeah. with a person. So, going back to that point about the knowledge, mm -hmm. um, this is uh, something that we are emphasizing again. We need to put emphasis on the uh, religious part of our knowledge, especially with our children. We live in an age where people are obsessed mm -hmm. with the secular qualification, the academic qualifications. Mm -hmm. And they put so much effort into that aspect of things. You know, the children go through um, the normal school life, but almost from grade one, they start extra lessons. Mm -hmm. And they're preparing for grade six examination, they start extra lessons from two, three years before. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it's a long, continuous cycle of extra lessons in order to, uh, to, to complete CSEC and, and, and get as many subjects as possible. Mm -hmm. 20, 25 subjects if possible. And really and truly, when you look at, the, uh, at that in the context of things, you don't need half of that in order to pursue further studies. Yeah. Half of that amount of subjects. So it becomes a thing about what? Uh, pride and show and boastfulness. And that's precisely what this, the, the story is teaching us. Humility in seeking knowledge. Seeking knowledge for the correct reasons. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is good to excel. It is good to excel. It's good to push ourselves and to do as, as much as we can or the best we can do. Allah has given us the ability. It is good to put, But we have to have balance. What benefit, what good is it for us to say that my child has gotten 20, 25 subjects at CSEC examination 
And by the time they complete CSEC examination, they don't know how to pray Salah. They can't read Surah Al-Fatiha and maybe two or three other Surahs properly, properly. Mm -hmm. When I say properly, I'm, I'm speaking about doing it in a way that is acceptable. Mm -hmm. As I said, many people, many, many people, they live their whole lives, they pray Salah for their whole lives, but if you ask them to read a Surah, when you listen to the, to the recitation, it is atrocious. And I'm not saying this to embarrass anyone. It is for us to understand the gravity of the situation. That, you know, our, our knowledge regarding our deen is sorely lacking. It is very, very shallow. And we need to put more emphasis in that area. So I want to encourage parents that give a bit more Put a bit more emphasis on the dini aspect of knowledge where your children are concerned. Yeah. Start from yourself, of course. But especially where our children are concerned, give them the opportunity to get some more, to learn more about their deen. And there are so many avenues in which we can, uh, we, we can be able to seek more knowledge and you know, in, get ourselves more uh, educated and informed regarding our deen, inshallah. Yeah, and Sheikh, you know, this, as you are speaking, you know, I, I was thinking this is just a miracle of Quran because you spent maybe the past 10, 15 minutes just explaining one word from this verse. Mimma or limta, rushda. Rushda. You know, and this rushda. is, you know, the Quran is of such that one word, you know, we can discuss it for hours. You know, and this and, is, and just to reemphasize that word, yeah. Uh, what Musa is asking Al Khadr is, can I follow you mm. on the condition that you teach me of what you have been taught of goodness? Yeah. Goodness, as I said, mm -hmm. it, co it, it covers both the dunya and the akhirah. Mm -hmm. It covers this worldly life and it covers the hereafter. Mm -hmm. It's not exclusive to religious affairs or to the hereafter or spiritual matters alone. Mm -hmm. It covers our livelihoods and everything that we do for the sake of having a halal, uh, you know, uh, good, sound livelihood in this world, one that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm -hmm. then all of that comes under goodness. So seeking knowledge has vast scope. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're emphasizing is that we must have balance in both. So two things, seek beneficial knowledge. Seek knowledge that will, be, will lead to goodness for ourselves. And secondly, let there be balance between seeking of academic uh, knowledge, so to speak, and knowledge about our deen, so that we can be able to practice, uh, you know, in, in a more informed way, and get to know our Lord and get to know about His deen in a better way as well, inshallah. So, Sheikh, I see that our time is almost up, and we may not get into the other verse where uh, Khadir is saying, uh, you will not have the patience. So maybe we can do that from the next program, inshallah. Uh, one of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, is it this, Sheikh? Yeah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the one who knows is not equal. Uh, he's asking this question, right? That does the one who knows equal to the one who do not know? You know? Yeah. Verily, it is those who have understanding that will take heed and will understand. So uh, this is the results actually of seeking beneficial knowledge. Right. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is emphasizing here mm -hmm. that those who have knowledge mm -hmm. uh, are not equal to those who don't have knowledge. Allah will elevate those among you who are believers and those who have been given knowledge in different levels. He will elevate them in his sight so <coughs> excuse me so seeking knowledge is something very virtuous in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as I said according to the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu it makes the way to Jannah easy for the person as well as a matter of fact the first revelation of the Quran started as we know with Iqra the command to read which is the way uh, or the primary way to seek knowledge all right so seeking knowledge has great great virtue in Islam but I want to conclude on this point uh, that what we are seeing from Al 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 Musa alayhi salam here in this story is that this humility in seeking knowledge that 
the, the story is not telling us that Al-Khadr was more knowledgeable than Musa in everything. Mm -hmm. Overall. It is clear from, you know, the, 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 the reality that we know that Musa salam was one of the five greatest prophets. That obviously he had more knowledge overall than Al-Khadr alayhi salam. Mm -hmm. But there were areas of knowledge that Allah taught Al-Khadr that he didn't teach Musa alayhi salam. A lesson that we need to learn from all of this, and this is more especially for those who have studied to a certain extent, those who may have titles of knowledge within the community, Sheikh, Mawlana, Talib al-Ilm, student of knowledge, whatever, Mufti, you know, these titles that are there. We need to understand that with knowledge, there must be humility. There is no benefit to knowledge if it is accompanied with arrogance and pride. Because those are diseases of the heart. Pride and arrogance are diseases of the heart that will lead to the fire of hell, regardless of the amount of knowledge that the person has. So if a person's knowledge causes him to become proud and boastful and arrogant and belittle people, then that is having the adverse effect, the opposite effect to what knowledge should have or should lead us to. The more we learn, the more we should know about our ignorance. This is the reality. Mm -hmm. Because in reality, we don't know much at all. None of us knows anything much at all. Put us all together and we still don't know much at all. Compared to the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we know very, we know nothing. وَمَا أُوتِيتُم مِّنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا you have not been given of knowledge except a very, very little. So regardless of how much we think we know, regardless if the person becomes a mujtahid mutlaq, mujtahid mutlaq as, as we know is like, you know, the highest level of, of ijtihad uh, where a person is, is, uh, is an expert in every Islamic science there is. And this was of course only in the early generations, in the, in the, the scholars of the, of the earlier generations achieved these heights. In today's world, we don't have that. We don't have that level of scholarship uh, among the scholars. Uh, but even then, no matter how much a scholar learned, and you put all of the scholars together, we still don't know anything much. Mm -hmm. Allah says you've been given of knowledge except a little. So why should our knowledge lead us to pride and arrogance? You know, there's a competition among many people nowadays. And we have to search our hearts for this. There's a competition among people to say who is the most learned, who has the most knowledge, right? And uh, sadly, you see this playing out sometimes in public, right? And, and this basically like tug of war and back and forth among people and refutations, all right? And, and really, it's of no benefit. It just shows a defect within ourselves. It reflects a defect within our hearts that we are not focused in the correct place or on what we should be focusing on. Our knowledge should lead us to become more humble and to become more sincere. And this is a, a pursuit that we should always, a perpetual pursuit. We, we should always be involved in trying to uh, purify our intentions. Uh, you know, striving for more and more for sincerity. Whilst we can never assert for ourselves that I am sincere, as, as we know, you know, uh, as the scholars say, that if you see that you are sincere, it means that your sincerity needs uh, to, you know, it needs uh, uh, sincerity itself. It means that you have to work on that, uh, or on renewing your intention because you are asserting sincerity for yourself when, uh, yourself when you don't, you don't have the right to. We can only hope for it. We do our action, we purify our intention as much as possible, and we hope for sincerity. But we can't assert that for ourselves. And so our knowledge must not lead us to pride. It mustn't lead to that competition among people. We strive for excellence. We strive to be the best we can be. And people will recognize if we are experts in a particular field. You know, the ummah will basically recognize if we excel in a particular area. But we don't have to go out there and assert it for ourselves. Mm -hmm. 
We strive to remain humble and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept insha'Allah and will guide us to that which is which good and pleasing to him. Yes, thank you very much Bilal Sheikh and our viewers. The knowledge that we really have is the knowledge that we practice. The knowledge that we put into practice is the knowledge that we, do, that, that, that we really have. Other than that, we are like donkeys carrying books as is referred to. So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that not only we seek beneficial knowledge, but also we put it into practice. This is as much as important as actually seeking the knowledge. So this is all we have for you on Perspectives for tonight. Inshallah, we will continue this story. Uh, so our final words for tonight are praise be to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.